Welcome to Nonprofit Profiles. I'm Genevieve Riatort. When local families experience challenging times, they need assistance on many levels to get back on their feet. The Salvation Army is committed to providing social services with compassion. On today's show, we will hear from two Salvation Army programs that are helping families in our community overcome challenges such as poverty, food insecurity, and homelessness. The Salvation Army, Santa Monica Corps, and the Westwood Transitional Village. We'll start our discussion with Diane Good, Executive Director of the Westwood Transitional Village, and Paulina, a resident. Thank you both for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. So, Diane, can you tell us a little bit about the program, maybe give us an overview? The Westwood Transitional Village is transitional. Uh, our purpose is to help families reunite that have been separated due to homelessness mm -hmm. and to help them get back on their feet either through benefits, finding benefits for them, jobs for them, um, housing for them. Uh, and um, it was started in 1999, was when the apartments were actually built. Wow. <coughs> they are full kitchens, full apartments. Mm -hmm. There are one to four bedrooms. Um, there are wow. 40 families. Mm -hmm. 18 of the units are for veteran families. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have up to two years. Mm -hmm. to get on their feet and get into permanent housing. We help them get into permanent housing. Wow, so it's actually like an apartment complex, uh, yes, several it apartment is. complexes? <laughs> yes, it is. And what are the services that you provide to the residents there? Case management uh, for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, we do provide after school programs and tutoring for the kids. This is a transitional housing for families, which means you must have a child under the age of 18 to live there. Mm -hmm. And so we have at any one time about 75 kids wow. that live there. So we have a lot of after school programming, a lot of tutoring. Uh, we have job search and job training for the adults. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, like I said, case management mm -hmm. uh, and whatever else they may need. And do you connect the families with other service providers that provide services that you may not have directly on your campus? Yes, we do, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The 18 uh, veteran units, of course, have the VA that they can depend on. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we hook up with um, the Westside Food Bank, for instance, or mm -hmm. for Beyond Shelter mm -hmm. uh, to help the families, yes. That's great. Yeah. And Paulina, I want to especially thank you for being here and being willing to share your story because it's so meaningful for us and our audience. So again, I thank you. You're welcome. Can you tell me about how you first came to find out about the Westwood Transitional Village and the circumstances in your life at that time? Actually, I was in a shelter in between. They gave us some a particular time to move out. So I was connected to Family Solution. I told them that I have to look for a place. Then they directed me to Westwood Transitional Village. Fortunately, I was approved with my son, and I really appreciate it. So at that time when you were in at the other shelter, were you with your son or were you separated? I was with my son. Oh, that's great. I've always been with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, how long have you been at the Westwood Transitional Village? I've been there past eight months now. And what do you feel about your experience there? Are you, is it a good place to be? It is. I will even recommend it to anybody that asks me because they've been of help to me and my son. Mm -hmm. It's like a home mm -hmm. to us. Whenever we need anything, they, they're always there for us, like my case manager, the director, and the staff. Mm -hmm. Yes, they've really helped us a lot. In regards like providing tutor for my son, giving me transport tokens mm -hmm. whenever I need it. Um, directed me to um, beyond the shelter mm -hmm. in regards to housing. Presently, they are helping me with housing. So that you can find the next place that will hopefully be yes, a more permanent place to Yes, and helping me with job too, yes. Mm -hmm. mm. And how does your son experience the program? Does he connect with some of the other kids that live there? Yes, mm -hmm. he's always playing with them, yes. They it must understand be nice. Each, uh, yes, <laughs> he's really enjoying it. I know, I have children myself, and uh, there was a period of time where we lived in an apartment complex that had lots of kids, and it was really so wonderful for them to be able to play with each other. So I imagine your son feels the same way, friends right nearby. Yes, he <laughs> does that with them. And uh, do some of the kids who live on the campus, do they all go to the same schools? 
Or does it, I guess it would depend on age. No, it depend, I believe it was only one girl who was going to his school, but they've moved. Mm -hmm. But they were not in the same class. Mm -hmm. Yes. And can you tell us a little bit about how other ways that clients find their way? Uh, Paulina mentioned Beyond Shelter as being the agency that referred them to you, but are there other ways that families find you? Uh, they can find us through the, the VA. Uh, they can find us, uh, of course, through any of the shelters in the area, mm -hmm. through the Salvation Army. Um, <coughs> we have actually housed people who have been sleeping in their cars on the street. Uh, so it's just a matter of who finds them and knows to refer them to us. Mm -hmm. And can you talk a little bit about how this particular program mm -hmm. fits into the overall picture with the Salvation Armies of Southern California? Well, this particular program, again, is for families only. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little different from most um, shelters because they have their own apartments. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, we are one of, there are two in the Salvation Army. One is for families with AIDS, and then ours is just a regular transitional village. Mm -hmm. And when you say families, does that include fathers, single fathers, as well as mother-father families? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because I know that for many families, there are shelter situations where they only accept mothers, but not fathers. <laughs> so yeah, it's nice yeah. that the whole family can stay together. Yes, absolutely. And how many families are living on, on the facility right now? Did you say 40? 40, yes. And does it range in age and family composition? It does. It does, and it, we, we've seen it change over the last year. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, we have anywhere from newborns, mm -hmm. mothers with newborns, up to uh, 18 years of age. Wow. The biggest grouping is about 7 to 12. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it probably gets pretty loud around there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. And what are some of the other things that, um, that happen at the campus? I know that there was a summer camp program can you talk just a little bit about that? Yes, the FBI sponsors us two summer camps, one for the 7 to 12 year olds and mm -hmm. another one for the 13 to 18 year olds. Mm -hmm. It's one week uh, in June and one week in July. Mm -hmm. They bring over their drug sniffing dogs, they bring over their robots that can break into houses and they teach the kids what kind of careers maybe they could aim for. That sounds exciting. Yeah, it's <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> Could you imagine your son working for the FBI? <laughs> 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 and has your son been able to benefit from some of those programs or activities at the center? Yes, he has, tremendously. Mm -hmm. Like during uh, two weeks ago, there was an activity that took place and he took part. Mm -hmm. Yes, during Christmas time, they have a lot of parties for the kids mm -hmm. which he benefited from, mm -hmm. yes. And what would you hope to get out of the, the program when you leave? Do you think, is there a particular way that you feel like this program has helped you that you might not have been able to achieve without the support of the Transitional Village and their staff? They, uh, to me, I believe they really did what they're supposed to do for me mm -hmm. in order to get to my feet. Sometimes they make inquiries to give me more information. Mm -hmm. on how to get my permanent place. Even while we were coming, uh, Diane was asking me how far about my house search. I told her, she said she would make some information for me mm -hmm. to know how she can help too. It must be wonderful to have someone to turn to to help with finding housing and finding your way. Yes, <laughs> they're always there for us. That was why I told you that it's like a home for us. Mm -hmm. mm. It must feel like having a family here. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how can our audience members uh, get involved? How can people support your uh, program and your work? Do you have volunteer opportunities? We have a lot of volunteer opportunities, including for the FBI camps. So we're always seeking out volunteers. Uh, donations. Many of these uh, families, when they move on, have no furniture or beds. Mm -hmm. And so we search for donations or donors for furniture, uh, clothing. Mm -hmm. um, so they can come to volunteer, they can give us donations, they can donate money, which we can use towards programming for the kids and for the adults. So uh, there's a lot of different ways that people can help. Absolutely. Well, wonderful. Thank you both so much for being on the show. I really appreciate you sharing your experience and 
telling us all about the, the program. It sounds like you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the Westwood Transitional Village is clearly doing a great job helping local families find their way out of challenging circumstances. Coming up, we'll hear about the services provided by the Salvation Army Santa Monica Corps. Please stay with us. I thought I had everything under control. Then, one day, something happened. I didn't know how to stop it. I didn't know there was help, until someone told me. Providing access to justice, the Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles can help with domestic violence issues, eviction defense, government benefits, immigration, and other civil legal issues. We're back with Lieutenant Eric Rudd, an officer with the Santa Monica Corps, and Sherry Larkin, president of its Women's Auxiliary. Welcome to you both. Thank, Thank you. you. So Eric, tell us about the Santa Monica Corps. What are the programs that you have and who are you serving? Well, we, we've been here, I'm gonna give us a little plug. We've been here since 1893, so 100. Wow, you don't look that old. Uh, <laughs> yes, well, the white hair gives it away. Uh, we, uh, we service anyone who has a need. We mm -hmm. do whatever we can to meet that need without discrimination. Mm -hmm. So if it's a senior who has uh, feeding needs or, or food needs or, or utility assistance, we try to help wherever we can. Mm -hmm. We send kids to camp, we have music programs, art programs throughout the week. We try to plug in where, where people miss other things. We try to plug in those holes. And how do people find out about your services? Well, uh, thankfully the Salvation Army has a, a good brand name. People know us and so yeah, they say- I've heard of it before. There you go, <laughs> yeah. They say go down to fourth, uh, down on 4th Street and we're on the corner of 4th and Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, people can call our office or just come on down. We're open pretty much six days a week, seven days a week for help if mm -hmm. people need to come down. And so you're serving people of all ages? All ages from cradle to uh, those who are enjoying their golden years. Wonderful. Yeah. And uh, I know that there's a food pantry on site because of course in my other life I work with the West Side Food Bank and we provide yes. food to that pantry. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? We do, uh, we are able to facilitate um, feeding three to 600 families um, a month mm -hmm. through that food bank, uh, through our, our association with the food bank. And people come in and they get uh, personal cleanliness, you know, uh, utility items mm -hmm. or food or whatever we can give for them, whether it's uh, uh, assistance to get to, to another shelter or mm -hmm. and, uh, other resources around town. So sometimes people may come in because they need food assistance, but once they're there, you can help them in other ways. Absolutely, a lot of times we have people that find themselves on the street and they don't have uh, cold weather items, be mm -hmm. it a coat or a decent pair of shoes, and we can accommodate that. We, we work with uh, the, the Salvation Army Thrift Store down mm -hmm. on uh, 11th and Colorado, mm -hmm. and we um, provide, uh, what do you call it, vouchers for people to go in and get items for that as well. Oh, that's great, so they can actually do their own shopping. Absolutely, so they don't have to have our selections. So, like many organizations, I know that you wouldn't be able to do the work that you do without significant help from volunteers. It is a volunteer-run army, that is true, yes. And I know that, Sherry, you are a volunteer, and you actually lead um, a group of volunteers. Can you talk about the Women's Auxiliary and the work that you do? The Women's Auxiliary's main goal is to give to the Salvation Army mm -hmm. for their needs. And they started back in the 60s, mm -hmm. and their first president was Ardvid McDade, who was the wife of the Santa Monica Fire Chief. Oh. So they've been in existence for quite a while, mm -hmm. and they give to all their programs. Our main goal is the shopping spree at Sears, mm -hmm. and the toys at Christmas is how it really started. Mm -hmm. And through that, we can do 300 families. So every dime that we raise goes right back to the core so that's what the great feeling is for us. So there are 300 families that get gifts at Christmas, toys at Christmas, as well as a shopping spree at Sears, is that correct? On top of that, plus there are other programs. What we do is we take all of our money and whatever program they need the money towards, mm -hmm. th that's what we give it to. Or a lot of our donators will designate 
they wanted to go to the music program mm -hmm. or the vacation school or a campership. Mm -hmm. So our largest fundraiser is a fashion show. Mm -hmm. And in our invitation, we ask for sponsors. And we get many people who donate on a certain level. Mm -hmm. And some of them designate where they want their money to go. And then we turn it over to the core. And we also do the veterans. Wow, so that's a lot of services. Can you talk a little bit about summer camp, music? I, I heard a lot of things in there. Absolutely, yes. We, we're very fortunate that the Salvation Army runs two uh, summer camp programs out in Malibu Canyon. Mm -hmm. And uh, we send hundreds of kids every summer go through the program and they have a, a week where they get to go out and they get to be the star. So they may be, at home they may be one of many children. Mm -hmm. Here they get to go out to camp and they get to go and they get to choose. They want to do a craft or go on a hike or, or learn a different skill or go to the craft house. And they get to go and do that. And, it's a and what are the ages of the kids that go to camp? I think the kids start at six and they go up to 17. Wow. Yes. That sounds wonderful. It's very good. And we have, uh, I did mention that we have uh, music programs as well. The Salvation Army for years has taught um, children how to play music. We, we think that's an important thing uh, to get people back into uh, the fine arts. We forget about that. You know, sure. kids are out getting distracted doing other things. If we give them something to focus on. And is that, that a year-round program? That is a year-round program, yes. So kids come after school. Does it happen at your facility? We do it at, at our facility, and, and people come in, they sign up for specific um, lessons, whether it's a brass instrument, trumpet. My daughter plays trumpet. Or we have keyboards, vocal, drums, and I think both bass and, and, and a regular six-string guitar. And they have a, a half an hour one-on-one um, -on -one practice with a teacher. That's fantastic. And are those... Uh, a Paid staff, volunteers, They a are paid staff, and, and mm -hmm. it's through donations to the Salvation Army that we're actually able to fund that program. Um, our local uh, office funds part of it, and our, our the contributions from the, from the community fund the rest of it, so. Oh, that's fantastic. And the children only have to pay a small portion, mm -hmm. and they get a personal lesson. And does your uh, facility also provide case management and referrals? We do referrals. We want to uh, start doing some case management. At this point, it's it's mostly just meeting direct needs. Mm -hmm. um, we are going through right now and actually re cleaning out our building and getting it reorganized so we can facilitate uh, needs better. We want to have a, a a store where people can actually come in and go shopping for themselves instead of getting a, a food box that they may not use all the items. Sure. So we've seen a lot of um, other food banks have gone that way. Yeah, I know a lot of our member agencies at the Westside Food Bank have moved to that choice model. It, it, it eliminates waste. It does, yeah, you don't think about it, you're all, you know, but if, if people's diets can't accommodate that, mm -hmm. they just leave it outside and that just goes to waste, so. Right. And uh, tell me a little bit, Sherry, about why you chose to get involved with the Salvation Army and, and what it means to you. Well, I uh, moved from Iowa mm -hmm. and retired and I love to volunteer. And somebody put me in the Salvation Army. And I belong to a lot of organizations and just volunteering and seeing what you can do because I have the time mm -hmm. and the energy and that's what it takes for volunteers. Mm -hmm. So that's why I do it. And have you had experiences working directly with the clients? I mean, what's it like when you see kids going to Sears and picking out a pair of shoes or getting that Christmas toy. It's a great feeling. Yeah. You um, you get all kinds of various kids. Mm -hmm. I had a little boy who I could hardly get to shop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a little boy who had money left over and he bought his mom a Christmas present. Mm -hmm. oh. So it's, it's all rewarding. Mm -hmm. And you know they need it. That's what the joy is. Mm -hmm. You're there to help and they need the help. Mm -hmm. So. That's so wonderful. And how about you, Eric? Can you talk a little bit about the clients that you serve and maybe share some stories? You know what? It, it's a joy because being in uniform, people see you all over town. And mm -hmm. people just come up and, I'm Mr. Salvation Army. So they come and, <laughs> and, and sometimes people have something that they want to give me to mm -hmm. donate to people or they have a need. Um, and I'm in the enviable position that I get to access everybody, people who want to donate their time and help out mm -hmm. and clients who have that need. So I get to be in the middle and, and get to experience all that joy. I get the, the volunteers that, that feel good about it and the clients whose 
needs are being met. Yeah. It's a wonderful opportunity when we, when we all work together, mm -hmm. we can really make our community a better place. And what are, I mean, we've talked a lot about the kids mm -hmm. and families, but what are some of the ways that maybe some seniors or just um, adults that may, may not have families, how are they getting benefits from the Salvation Army? Well, we, we have a adult rehabilitation program mm -hmm. right up the street from us on 11th and Olympic, and they have 55 beds. Mm -hmm. it's, at the, it's a men's facility, and they do alcohol and drug rehabilitation mm -hmm. through their... Um, we have that, we have the, the Silvercrest resident with a low income senior housing mm -hmm. right downtown with us as well. We try to meet all the needs where mm -hmm. we can. And how many seniors are housed in that facility? Oh goodness, I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, is it, you know, 10 I'm or sorry, like 5,000? It's, 5, five, <laughs> it's five stories, so I think it's maybe 100. Oh 100 sure, okay, so. just giving us a ballpark. There you go, That's yeah. plenty good. And uh, I guess I wonder a little bit about whether that's um, a permanent place so people can come there and they know that they can live there as long as they need or Absolutely. is it transitional? It is not a transitional. It is, it is a fully functional um, um, apartment building. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's for seniors who, don't, who are self-sufficient. They mm -hmm. don't need medical right. but they have a- But they need low-income housing. They need low-income housing and it's very hard to come by on the west side. So. <laughs> yeah, we all know about that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I know uh, one last thing I wanted to talk about was that you do also hot meal programs. We do. Can you tell us about that? Who's coming to get meals? How many people are you serving? We have, uh, it's, a, it's a growing number and uh, it's interesting. We have a, a huge number of uh, indigent folks on, mm -hmm. in, on the west side and we have a lot of younger teens who are maybe experimenting with drugs and running away from home and we can mm. try to plug them in or get a hot meal in them and, and it's like my own kid. I just want to take care of them. Sure. And so they'll come for that meal and they again. They come for that meal and they'll come back again because they're treated with respect and dignity mm -hmm. and treated like a human being and that's what everyone needs. And I know you have some regular meals that happen every week. We do, we do. We feed on Sunday, on Wednesday night, and on Thursday afternoon. And do those meals take place at your facility? Right on our, on our facility at 1533 Fourth Street. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I just want to thank you both so much for being here. Thank you. It's really exciting to hear about the work that you're doing. It sounds like you're really meeting a lot of very much needed needs in this community. Thank you. And without volunteers, like you, I don't think we could get all of this work <laughs> done and all Absolutely. of these people helped. So I really appreciate you sharing your experience with us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, thank you for being with us. The Salvation Army is doing a wonderful job caring for people in need in our community, and they're providing vital services in a compassionate way. For more information about their programs, visit SalvationArmySoCal.org. Thanks for being with us for this edition of Nonprofit Profiles.